Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today I would like to, um, to talk about one particular application of the fundamental um, theorem of algebra, um, how to solve um, certain um, equations of uh, the higher order. Now, um, we do know about the second order um, uh, equations. Um, but it's kind of difficult to deal with third order, fourth order, etc. So that's about um, that's about what I'm going to talk. Okay. So now this lecture is called division of the polynomial. Basically, polynomials can be divided like similar to a long division, something like this. Now this lecture is part of the course called. Um, Mass routines, that's incorrect physics routine because there is also a physics routine, but I have decided to return to m this particular application of the fundamental uh, theorem of algebra. So there is a mass routines course, and this lecture belongs to that course. And uh, it's all presented on unizor.com, both mass routines and physics routines, and something else. Now, the site is completely free, there are no ads, so just pure knowledge, and I do recommend you to watch all lectures of both courses, math and physics, uh, from the website because every lecture has a very detailed um, textual um, part, like notes. Like parallel to the video, you have these notes, like a textbook, basically. Um, now, in addition, the website um, basically it contains the whole course, not just one particular lecture, which you can find on YouTube or, or YouTube or somewhere else. Mm, so that's important, and uh, um, and also there are exams. Also, you can take them as many times as you want, um, but it kind of verifies whether you really know um, the subject. So, mass routines, algebra, division of polynomials. That's what today's um, lecture is about. Now, let me just remind you that again, it's very easy we know the formula to solve the quadratic equation. If this is your quadratic equation, there is a formula which we have derived and uh, many other people did. And uh, if you want to, uh, roots of this equations are minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac. OK, so we know the formula and we can use it without any problems. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, then we're talking about complex solutions. But according to the fundamental um, theorem of uh, algebra, there are always two solutions. Sometimes they can co coincide. Two solutions can coincide. That's when the graph of this function, which is parabola, just touches, for instance, zero in one particular place. So these are two real um, roots and this is basically two but coincided with each other. That's how it's basically supposed to uh, be explained. All right, so we know this. Now, what if my equation is slightly more complex? This is the third order um, uh, equation. Well, there is, <coughs> there is a formula. It's that big, and uh, it's called Cardano formula. Now, the, but it's really so big that you cannot really practically use it. I mean, may, maybe somebody does, but I've never seen. But the formula is really very impressive. And there is basically um, uh, the special uh, way how to derive with this, how Cardano derived and some other derivations of this formula. There is also a formula for the fourth order of uh, um, equation like this. It's even bigger than Cardano formula. Um, and that's it, basically. Starting from the number five, the fifth order, if this is x, x to the fifth degree, the, uh, the highest member, then there is no formula, and uh, as far as I know, there is a proof that there cannot be a general formula which 
helps in the uh, equation of the fifth and and uh, higher order uh, equations. So how do we do in these cases? Well, the general brute force approach is numerical. I mean, we have computers and we can always have certain algorithms which really help us to um, derive with uh, uh, the roots to a very, very high precision. But that's not what we are talking about. I would like to talk about certain um, techniques which might actually um, help you to find to, to solve the solution uh, to solve the uh, equation of the higher order so that's about these techniques and the technique actually which I'm talking about today is division of the polynomials now let's just recall that according to the fundamental theorem of algebra if you have some kind of a polynomial um, uh, let's say of nth degree of x, then it can always be represented as well some kind of a coefficient probably, and then multiplication of um, this particular uh, members. Well, let me explicitly put one, two x minus x n. So the polynomial has exactly n complex, generally speaking, complex um, roots, and it can be represented as this particular product where x1, x2, and xn are roots of this polynomial. So the polynomial would look then as general polynomial of the nth degree would be a0, let's say, x to the n minus l a1, a1. Or I will start with n. Um, yeah, I will start with n. So 0 uh, plus a1 x to the n minus 1 plus etc. plus a1 n to the first plus a n's. This is 1. Times. So this, in this case, would be a0. So this polynomial of the nth order can be represented in this way. This is basically the corollary of the fundamental theorem of algebra. The fundamental theorem is that there is always a root, complex root, of any polynomial. And uh, as a uh, uh, corollary from this follows this, and that was in the previous lecture, which I have proven. Okay. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that, let me talk about, let's say, the third degree. That would be better. So if you have a polynomial of the third degree, x, and that's... Uh, a x to the third plus b to the second plus c to the first plus d, I can always represent it as a times x minus a times x minus b times x minus c, where a, b, and c, generally speaking, complex roots of the equation uh, of this polynomial equals to zero. Okay? This is the nth whether this is the third or just easier to explain basically. So what actually this division of the polynomial uh, talks about? Let's assume that I know one particular root, let's say C. How? Well, there are different techniques maybe to guess basically the root. So if you have guessed, okay, you look, you look at the equation and you kind of feel, okay, let me just check x equals 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3, and one of them probably fits. Well, great. If you have one particular root, then the question is how to find the other roots. Well, if you can make this division, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, if you can divide it by x minus c, if you know C, if you can just algebraically divide to come up with some other 
polynomial, let's say, um, how can I do it? M x squared plus mx plus uh, know, cube. Now, if you will be able to do this, now this is already a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation we can res uh, we can solve. So my, my 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 point is that y if you know one particular root of the equation, you can always reduce the order of the equation from the third to the second, or from the nth to the n minus ones, all right? Which is, it's easier equation, all right? The lower the order, the easier it is. Maybe we will be able to guess then another root and another division will help us to reduce the order even further. But in this particular case, I would like to stop basically on the third degree, which I have converted into the second degree, second order. And this, we, we have a formula, so we can basically solve it. And I'm going to talk about this particular technique, how to, s how to divide one polynomial onto another on a concrete example, and you will understand the whole, the whole technique. Okay, so let me wipe out this. Okay, so what is my example? My example is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. Okay, this is my equation. So the first thing is, well, maybe I can guess the root. Now, if you uh, consider the representation of this polynomial as x minus a times x minus b times x minus c, this is the third order, so there are three roots, then what is the free member? Well, obviously it's uh, minus a times minus b times minus c, right? When you will m multiply x minus a, x minus b, x minus c. The only free without any x Member, if I will, if I will multiply it together, would be, well, it's something defend, de, de, which depends on x, or even I should really put maybe even x times something plus, or rather minus in this case, minus a times b times c, right? A, b, and c is the only free member of this multiplication, of the product of this multiplication. So we have to have this. So ABC should be equal to 30, to 30. Okay, well, let me try. Maybe there are some integer which uh, fits this particular um, equation. And integer should be found among divisors of the free member. Well, 30 has like 2, 3, that's 6, and 5 all prime numbers. Well, then let me try these. Okay, let me try, let's say, 5. 5 to the cube, 125. 5 to the square, 25 by 4 plus 100. Minus 55 minus 30. No, definitely 100. Definitely is not 0. Okay, let me try minus 5, maybe. Minus 5 to the third degree would be minus 125. Uh, this will be still 25, so it's plus 100. Minus 5, that would be plus 55. And minus 30. Uh, minus 155 plus 155. Okay, that's 0. Great. So, minus 5 is the root. If minus 5 is the root, then I should put here minus minus 5, which is plus 5. All right? Okay, so I know that my polynomial can be represented as x minus a times x minus b times x plus 5. I don't know a and b, but if I will be able to divide this polynomial by this polynomial and have the result of this multiplication, then I will be able to obtain the quadra quadratic equation and I will solve it. 
So how to divide this by this? All right, let's just do it. x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. I will divide by x plus 5. Okay, now, if I have to have some kind of a polynomial which multiplied by this gives this, then my first member should be x squared, right, to get the x cubed. Well, let's see what happens. If I will multiply x squared by x plus 5, I will have x cubed plus 5 x squared. Okay, I've got that, but I need this. So, if I will subtract from this this, my result would be this. So this is unsatisfied members yet. Okay, now I will add something to my uh, result of my division. If I need to get x uh, square um, and I have x plus 5, so I have, I have to multiply by minus x, right? So minus x. So what will be as a result? Minus x times x plus 5, but minus x uh, square minus 5x. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't put x here. Okay. Okay, I've got this. So I've satisfied x square. If I will subtract, it will be minus 6x minus 30. Unsatisfied. But I have my x plus 5 multiplied by what? By minus 6. Then I will have minus 6x minus 30. 0. So, I have to multiply my x plus 5 by x squared and minus x and minus 6 and add the results together to get this, which means that the result of my multiplication is x squared minus x minus 6. So this is this. Now, this is a square, uh, this is a quadratic equation, x to the square, all right? So uh, it's easier to solve it. So let me just have this solution, uh, which would be, according to the formula, would be 1 plus minus uh, square root of uh, 1 square minus x plus 24 divided by 2 which is uh, 1 plus minus 5 divided by 2, which is uh, 3 and minus 2. So, besides, besides minus 5, which I have guessed in the very beginning, I have 3 and 2 are the roots, and the whole thing, cubic equation, is solved. Again, how? by guessing one of the roots and then dividing using this polynomial thing. Okay, so as you see, it's just a technique. I mean, this lecture is not really very theoretical, just a technique. How to do reduction of the order of the equation in case you know one particular um, root. Okay, so let me just, as an example, do one more thing and that would be the end of it. Because technique is really very simple. If you have the root, then you try to find out all the components you have to multiply this root to get the original equation. One by one, member by member. Okay, in this case my equation is of the fifth order. Don't get scared. It's really simple. Okay, now, again, my free member is 6. Now, what if I have some integer, which is this particular uh, the solution to this particular equation? I mean, if you're in school, then most likely 
the problem which you are given is something supposed to be like simple, right? Relatively simple. So, relatively simple in this case to look for the root of this equation among uh, divisors of six, and there are only two, two and three. Well, actually, plus or minus two and plus or minus three. Well, I checked it, and it seems to be that x is equal to minus three is a solution. Well, you can check. Um, which means it should be divisible by x plus 3, right? Minus minus 3. So let's divide this by x plus 3. We have to satisfy x5 first. So what's my first member is x4. If, if I multiply x plus 3 by x uh, to the fourth, I will have x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth. And if I will subtract what's left, this is zero, this is zero, left is this. Minus x to the third minus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. Okay. I have to divide it by x plus 3. And that would be uh, minus x squared. So minus x cubed minus 3x squared and if I will subtract nothing here, minus 2x minus 6. Now, x plus 3 is my divisor. <coughs> Obviously, it's minus 2. Be minus 2x minus 6, 0. So these are components. So the result would be x plus 3 times x to the fourth minus x squared and minus 2. So that's the result of my division. Now, I have reduced my original equation of the fifth order to the fourth. So now I have to solve this. x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, in the previous case, the result of the division was quadratic equation. In this case, it's the fourth order, but thankfully, it's actually by quadratic equation because if I will substitute x squared equals to y, I have a quadratic equation which has uh, solutions 1 plus minus square root of 1 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 1 plus minus 3 divided by 2, which is um, minus 1 and uh, 2, right? Two solutions. So this is either minus 1 or 2. And this is easy. If x squared is equal to minus 1, then solutions are plus minus i, right? Where i is the imaginary unit, remember this? i squared is equal to minus 1. Uh, and uh, if x squared is equal to 2, then x is equal plus minus square root of 2. So we have five solutions. Two solutions, two solutions, and one solution. Solved. Okay, again, again, all these kind of techniques are good in good cases. Like in this particular case, I have guessed the first root integer root and the result was an equation of the fourth order which kind of the same as equation of the second order because it's only square and the fourth degree. There is no x to the first order, first degree and no x to the third degree. Well, we are lucky. Okay, but these are the problems which you probably might be given by, by your teacher or, or exam or something like this. So that's why these particular um, uh, techniques are important. Again, my purpose was just to demonstrate how to divide one polynomial by another. And uh, obviously you understand that um, you can divide not only using this technique, you can only not only divide uh, the polynomial of, of some higher degree by, by linear expression, in this case x plus 3, you can divide it into 
uh, uh, polynomial of the second deg degree as well. Technique is exactly the same. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They are on unisor.com. You go to the Mass for Teens um, uh, uh, chapter part of this course, and it's algebra, and it's uh, part of the topic called Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>